Hello beautiful internet family, Dan here from danstube.tv and today we finally have the long-awaited January update for the Mavic 3 and this brings all of those features that were promised on launch date but were never available in the Mavic 3. They were just saying feature coming soon. Now we've got all of the features that they promised us on the release date finally available for Mavic 3 users. This video is in collaboration with Sammy Law Tech. He's a really awesome YouTuber with a bunch of different tech content. So check out Sammy's channel. I would highly recommend it. One of my favorite tech channels on YouTube. This whole video is gonna be uploaded onto his channel as well as my channel. So make sure to go over to his channel and show him a bunch of love. Check out some of his videos. He has some really unique tech content over there. And we're hoping to do some more collaborations together in the future. So let us know in the comments below if you'd like to see more content from Sammy and myself. On the screen right now, you will see the full list of features that are available now for Mavic 3 users. It was quite an extensive firmware update. There are a bunch of new features that they added here. And it finally feels like the Mavic 3 as it was intended to be. It's got all of those features that we were waiting for all packaged into the drone and it seems to be working really well. There were still a few minor bugs I noticed, which I'll mention a little bit later in the video, but overall all of the features work perfectly fine and it's now at the point where I think I'm ready to do my like updated review on the Mavic 3 after all of these updates have become available and after the drone has kind of at its final stages. You know, we might see some more updates in the future. We might see some more features potentially, but this is pretty much how the Mavic 3 was intended to be released. One of the big features that a lot of people were waiting on is the quick shots mode, which is normally available straight away for all DJI drones. But again, the Mavic 3 didn't get this immediately. It took a little longer than expected to see quick shots land on the Mavic 3, but we finally have quick shots and we have all of the usual culprits that you'd expect in the quick shot modes. You don't have any new exciting quick shots here. You've just got the classics. So you've got Drony, Rocket, Circle, Helix, Boomerang, and Asteroid. Now, they're all great. They all worked really well. Uh, you have two options when it comes to recording. You can only choose these two options. So it's either 4K 30 FPS or 1080p. 30 FPS. That's literally all you can do. Now, if you're based in Australia, like I am, and you use PAL settings, you don't have those options. So you can't shoot in 25 frames per second. You can't shoot in 24. Some people like 24. You can't shoot in 60. It's literally just 4K 30 or 1080p 30. So quite limited when it comes to uh, the resolutions and the options that you have there. But overall, the feature worked really well. Subject scanning works. So you can see the little plus where the boat is. You can literally tap on that and then choose the quick shot mode that you want to use. Now, all of the quick shot modes worked perfectly fine. I had no major issues with them. There were two small little things that I found to be just a little bit of an annoyance, something that could be definitely fixed with a software update or firmware update in the future. The first thing was I had a few occasions where I'd press start. It would make the noise as if it was recording and about to start and it would think about it and then just wouldn't do anything. And then it would kind of reset itself so you saw the start button again. That happened a few times for me. I believe it happened about three times where I pressed start and it just didn't start. Now, if you're not observant and you just press start, you heard, you know, you were listening out for that audio cue, you heard it record, and then you looked away, for example, you might've missed the fact that it didn't actually start the procedure. So that's something that hopefully will just be fixed with a firmware update. It's a very small bug seemed to happen for me a few times, but it was a little bit annoying and something I've never experienced before. The other thing that I noticed was some of the movements were just a little bit awkward. Again, I think this is something that will be ironed out. It could have also just been the distance I was away from the subject, but I found some of the movements were just a little bit awkward, especially with that asteroid mode. The kind of revealing shot where the drone moves back and then pulls up that just felt a little bit awkward. And when you watch it back, it looks a little bit, I guess, jarring or, or uncomfortable. It's not a smooth movement. 
Um, that's something again that can be ironed out with future updates. But besides those two like very small issues and besides the fact that you've got limited options when it comes to the resolutions, that's really all I can complain about. Overall, it's, it works exactly as you would expect and all the shots look very unique and the drone did a great job of you know, actioning everything that I wanted it to do and creating the exact shot that I wanted to capture. Moving on to the panorama mode, we finally have options to use panorama mode with high resolution photos. So there's four options here. You can either capture a sphere, a 180 degree shot, a wide angle shot, or a vertical shot. So I tested all four of them. And again, as you would expect, it worked flawlessly. Very unique perspectives, as you would expect. The sphere mode actually does a really great job of creating a sphere that you can interact with through the DJI Fly application. This works really well and is always impressive to see like a full 360 degree globe experience. And I love that, you know, it's something that's very unique um, that you can't really, you know, replicate with any other product on the market. The fact that your drone just automatically captures all of those photos and then stitches it together for you within the software is something really cool to see. One thing I did notice is if you look up at the sky, you'll notice there's not much detail there and it's almost grayed out. That's just the fact that it's not capturing those photos, I guess, angling up because the camera can't look above itself. So you kind of have a small little window there where there's just no detail and no photos have been captured, but you won't really notice it. That's just me being really pedantic and you know looking into these things to, I guess, give you guys the full experience. But overall, the sphere was great. It captured a very unique sphere for me. It's just right at the top of the frame, looking directly up. There's not too much detail, and obviously it couldn't capture a photo there because there's no camera on top. But besides that, it worked really well. The 180 degree worked really well, and I actually loved the perspective of the wide angle panorama as well. I tried to get in nice and close to the beachfront here, and it did create a very nice wide angle. It, it creates a unique perspective, but it doesn't look stretched. You know, a lot of wide angle cameras, if you think about an action camera, it's a wide angle lens, but it looks very stretched on the sides, where I found this actually creates a very unique perspective, and it actually looks like a wide angle shot, but it's just not stretched. It looks very natural, which I love. And then you also have vertical as well, if you really wanted to take a vertical photo with your drone, which could be relevant if you've got a tall building or something that you just can't capture in the shot. That's another unique offering as well. So overall, I think the panorama mode is great. And when I look at the quality of the photos, I'm very impressed. You know, that's something they added. Panorama mode capable of capturing in high resolution and it does as they've advertised. It captures really high quality panorama photos. And again, very impressed by this feature, especially because that Mavic 3 camera system is just so crispy and detailed. It makes the world of difference when you capture something like a panorama. The next feature they added is burst shooting. Now, this is a basic offering, but it might be useful for some people out there. Basically, you go into the photo options and then you've got burst and then you've got three options. You can either take three photos, five photos or seven photos. One of my biggest gripes with this feature is that you can't choose the time between each photo. So it really is a burst photo. You don't have much time to really think about it. You know, I would love it if there was an option to time, let's say, a second or two seconds between each photo. So then I can actually get some dynamic moving shots. But unfortunately, it just doesn't give you much time. It literally just goes, Ch -ch -ch -ch. it's so unbelievably quick that it's almost not worthwhile, I wanna say. You know, like, yes, if there's some really fast movement going on, let's say there's like a jet ski behind you and you wanna capture every movement, you can capture it, but it captures it so quickly that it's almost, you might as well just, it's not worth it. You might as well just use a single photo here. I would love to see some options for, you know, just time intervals. Like you can choose the time shot through photos, which is great. But if you're gonna choose burst photos, I'd love a little bit more freedom here to actually choose the intervals between each burst shot. But with that being said, the burst shot worked as it's advertised. All of the photos were in focus, so that's a massive positive. And it does exactly as it's advertised. It is a burst photo option. So if you really care about burst photos, this is a cool new feature. But again, please give us some timed options here. I think that would actually make it a more useful offering. You know, even if I could make it 0.5 of a second between each photo, that would actually make it something useful. You know, I could start moving around a subject and capture some unique photos 
um, but still in that burst setting. So something that hopefully DJI will consider in the future. Another new feature that was announced on the release date that a lot of people were interested in is this new advanced return to home. So previously we just had the normal return to home where it would just go straight home basically. You're going a straight line and you didn't really have, I guess, too much customization with it. You could choose the return to home altitude, but outside of that, it just kind of did exactly what you put into the parameters there. So if I had it at 100 meters, the drone would fly up to 100 meters and then it would just go in a straight line to wherever I am. Now you can choose the advanced return to home and the whole idea of this is it will fly an optimal return to home route. So that actually means that it will try to preserve battery life and it will try to actually get back to you as safely as possible uh, with the most optimal and most efficient way of getting back to you. So in practice, this seemed to work really well. I mean, even though I had it set at return to home altitude of 100 meters, the drone never went up to 100 meters. It would literally just locate me and then start flying back to me. Now I tested it at different heights to see if it would go up to 100 meters or to see if it would adjust, you know, how it was coming back to me. It didn't really do that. So for me, I would prefer to manually land my drone. I'd never use return to home. But if you really care about return to home, this is a pretty unique way of going about it because it's gonna save a lot of time. You know, it's gonna to try to find the most effective way to get back to you and the safest way to get back to you at that as well. So, you know, it's something that on paper sounds really cool, not something that I care about too much or use, but it was cool to see in practice, you know? It would literally just locate me and fly back to me and it didn't actually go up to that 100 meter altitude. So for me, you know, even though it's got its sensors on it and it can, you know, increase its altitude if there's trees around and it can get back to you in the most effective way, that just worries me a little bit because it never went to that 100 meters, which is something that I've got programmed into the settings there, which you can see. So that's something maybe I would like to see. I mean, I, I get that it's trying to be optimal and it's returning to home, but you know, there were people around today, there were trees, and I wanted to see it get to a safe height before it returned to home but it seemed to just prioritize getting back to me uh, within the quickest, uh, I guess, route or route, however you want to pronounce it. So yeah, don't know 100% about that, but it definitely did work and it came back to me very quickly. Just before I continue with the rest of this video, I do have an ultimate online drone course for beginners that I've created myself. It took months to develop all the most relevant information that beginner drone pilots need to know. And the drone course is called the Fearless Drone Academy. It's got literally everything you need to know, two and a half hours of high quality video tutorials. There's a bunch of resources in there. There's insights and guidance from a drone expert, and it's the perfect starting point for a beginner drone pilot. If you do wanna check it out, you can use the code DANSTUBE to save 10% off the drone course. I'd love to know in the comments below what your thoughts are on the drone course if you do pick it up. And if you need any more guidance or help along your way, then let me know, because I'm always here to help you guys out. The other thing to mention is the $100 discount that I have available to my audience. So if you shop through the D1 store and use the code DANS100, you'll save $100 off your Mavic 3 purchase, and you'll also get three really cool gifts. So check that out if you're interested in picking up the Mavic 3. The next feature that was added with this recent update is called Color Display Assist. And this is only available through the D-Log color setting. So in the normal setting, it's not available, but straight when you go to D-Log, it will pull down an option to then enable the color display assist. And what color display assist is, is it basically displays more natural colors in real time. So when you set D-Log, it's a very flat color profile. So that means that you kind of have to have the knowledge of how you want to pull out the colors. You know, you don't have any option to play with it on the drone, you can't obviously display it or kind of see how it's going to look when you edit it. And that was up until they released this display assist, the color display assist. So the idea is basically it will display natural colors in real time, even though it's capturing in that raw flat profile, the D-Log color profile, it will kind of pull out some of the colors just to show you what's possible. Now, if you compare it to the normal and then the color assist on D-Log, you'll notice that normal is a lot more vibrant, a lot more saturated, and it really does make the colors pop. But with D-Log, it's obviously a very flat profile, and even when you enable the color display assist, it's quite subtle in the way that it actually pulls out the colors, but it's nice to know. You know, for people who always use D-Log, 
you're used to almost just a gray display. It's just such a flat profile that none of the colors really pop. So having something that's more of a visual cue, so it can give you an idea before you go into your editing program and really play with the image, it's just nice to have that on the fly. You know, it just shows you what's possible and it gives you an idea, it gives you a sense of what the colors are gonna look like when you edit it in post-production. So this is just a really useful feature, something that's so easy to enable. And I think a lot of people are gonna love this as it's just a nice visual cue while you're flying your drone. Moving on to the next feature, which is digital zoom in the normal video modes. So obviously we have the telephoto lens, which is called the explore mode, which gives you up to 28 times zoom. But now they've added a digital zoom offering. So in the normal video mode, you can only go up to two times zoom, but it's still useful to have a little bit of a zoom offering. I thought that we would see more than two times zoom, but they've decided to just make it two times zoom here. I mean, it's a useful thing because it's still gonna retain a lot of that quality, seeing as it's not a major zoom factor. But even when I adjusted it, I went down to 1080p, I went to 4K, I went to 5K. It was only up to two times zoom. So a very small thing to offer here. I think a lot of people will like that. It's a welcome offering. And like I said, it's only an incremental zoom to the point that the quality isn't gonna drop. You know, like you're still gonna have a really high quality video but you get a tiny amount of zoom out of it. So I think that's just something that's a nice offering. You know, nothing major, nothing ridiculously exciting, but it's still something nice to see from DJI. Moving on to the next notable feature, which is relating to master shots. Now it's a very small offering here. It's nothing major in terms of, you know, how you can customize the master shots experience. They haven't offered waypoints here. They haven't offered anything like major when it comes to master shots. But what they have done is they've made it possible to capture 4K 60 and 1080p 60. So previously it was just 1080p 30 and 4K 30, but now we've got 60 FPS offerings, which is really nice to see. It's just a nice additional offering again, something really sweet for people that, you know, want to use 60 FPS, maybe want to slow the footage down or really want the additional frame rate you know, now it's an offering. Now you can go 60 FPS, both 4K and 1080p. And then the final feature that I thought was notable and worth creating a whole video out of, as I mentioned, there's a bunch of other features and tweaks and other little things that they've added. But the next thing that I thought was really cool is they've apparently increased the image sharpness of the telephoto camera when shooting at high magnification. So that means, I'm guessing, high magnification would be those final few zooming options. So the seven times zoom is like the native zoom of that camera. And then you've got 14 and 28 times. So I'm assuming that 14 and 28 times will have a sharper image here. Now I've got a comparison so you can see what it was like when the Mavic 3 was initially released. I filmed a video then testing out all the different zoom options. So check that one out, that will be up on the screen right now. And you can see that as it gets to 14 and 28 times, the image is definitely quite, I guess, pixelated and low quality at that point. It's just not a sharp image. So they've tried to address that here. And from what I can see, it is definitely a little bit sharper. It's still not the most amazing thing in the world and still something that I would probably avoid. I think that seven times zoom is the sweet spot and it looks really nice. But it's nice to see that they've addressed that. And it's obviously something that people were complaining about. So I think definitely there's an improvement here. And I think that it's a noticeable improvement to the point that it's worth checking out. If you've got the Mavic 3 and you maybe use telephoto and you weren't happy with that explore mode, check it out now because it's definitely a lot sharper at 14 and 28 times. It's a noticeable improvement and it's just a nice quality of life improvement that DJI have addressed here. It's really nice to see DJI addressing something like this because I actually mentioned it in my initial video. I definitely noticed that the image was not that sharp. So the fact that they've addressed this really does mean a lot to me and hopefully a lot of other people out there because they clearly care about the Mavic 3, they care about the users and they wanna give us the best experience. So the fact that they've improved that sharpness and the fact that it is actually noticeable, they've probably just done some kind of I guess sharpness tweaking when it comes to the actual processing of the image. So it's not like, you know, it's unlocked all these new features and full potential of the telephoto camera. Like at the end of the day, the seven times zoom is like its native zooming point. That's the point that is the crispiest. That's the point where, 
you know, it's actually the, the optical zoom as such, like it's the fixed zoom point, sorry, not the optical zoom, because it doesn't adjust. That fixed seven times zoom is the point where it's gonna be the nicest, the highest quality, but the others are all digital and all like hybrid variations. So they've definitely addressed it here and it does definitely make a big difference the sharpness of the image so again a really nice thing for dji to address and then like i mentioned dji also included a few other quality of life improvements bug fixes and a few other little tweaks and uh, improvements so check out the full list of the actual features that were added in this firmware it's a really really cool thing to see that they've added more than i expected you know i was expecting just the basic few features being added but the fact that they've tried to do some quality of life improvements and they've really, I guess, enhanced the experience and the overall, uh, I guess, user experience just through the interface and some of the little things that I was not expecting, you know, like digital zoom, I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't improving an improvement to the, I guess, image sharpness um, and a few other things in there that I didn't actually mention in this video. Just nice quality of life updates with the major updates as well. So really nice job here from DJI. It's really, really exciting to see that the Mavic 3 is finally getting to the point that it is like a fully fleshed out product with so many options and offers for the end user. It's great to see. So like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, check out Sammy's YouTube channel. He's an awesome tech reviewer. He's got a bunch of other like vlog content and really fun tech content on his channel. So go over there, show him some love, let him know that I sent you over there. And I would love to see you guys in the comment section of his new videos as well as my new videos. It's always great to connect with you guys in the comments. I uh, can't wait to see you there and I will see you in the next video. Again, thank you for all of your support and I'll chat to you in the next one. Peace.